Located on the second floor of the museum, Worlds Apart, Musical Instruments from Secular to Sacred, highlights objects from the Joanne and Frank Edwin collection, which hails from all over the world. Opera singer, musician, scholar, and teacher, Frank Edwin first attended the Miami Conservatory before graduating from the University of Miami. He then won a scholarship to the Juilliard School of Music in New York, but World War II interrupted his studies when he enlisted in the United States Army as a medic. After the war, Edwin remained in Italy, where he directed the theater education program at the American Academy of Rome. He toured the capital cities of Europe, performing and lecturing before packed audiences, and was named to the prestigious Royal Opera Company of Rome. He was selected to perform on the first post-war radio broadcast made by Pope Pius XII, and he earned his doctorate from the University of Rome. Upon returning to the United States, Edwin lived in New York, where he met Joanne Lipinski of Asheville, North Carolina. They married in 1948 and toured the country as Edwin performed in more than 150 concert halls. The couple settled in Asheville, North Carolina in 1952, and Edwin continued to sing and teach, joining the faculty at the University of North Carolina Asheville as a professor of music. Throughout his life, Frank Edwin collected objects from all over the world to educate his students and himself on the vast scope of musical instruments. Displaying a collection uniquely tailored to teaching audiences unfamiliar with international musical traditions, Worlds Apart, Musical Instruments from Secular to Sacred, aims to offer visitors new perspectives on global music and a chance to consider how music is used for prayer and leisure in cultures around the world. The exhibition features a section dedicated to African chordophones, which are instruments that create sound through the vibrations of strings and include harps and lyres. African harps, particularly arched or bow harps, can be found in several sub-Saharan African music traditions, particularly in the Northeast. Next to the African chordophones are instruments from South Asia. The tabla, tampura, and sitar are instruments predominantly used in Hindustani classical music. A basic classical music ensemble includes the sitar to play the complex improvisations, while the tempura provides a continuous drone, and the tabla accompanies. The sarangi added to this arrangement would also provide accompaniment. Because Hindustani music often includes singing, one of the musicians may also provide vocals. In the center of the exhibit are three noteworthy keyboard instruments. The only known surviving grand piano made by Christopher Goner is the jewel of Edwin's collection. Christopher Goner was among the most prolific builders of the small square piano in London from 1770 until 1800, and was known for a high degree of sophistication and craftsmanship. He was known to have advertised himself as a maker of both small square pianos and grand pianos, but until the example shown here was discovered, no other grand pianos had been seen. This piano, made around 1795, is unusual in being very small for a grand piano, only six feet long, and would have been considered one of the portable grand pianos, similar to those that Longman and Broadrip sold. With three strings per note, it was intended to perform more like the larger forms, which were typically at least a foot longer. Flanking the Goner piano is a Thomas Mackle & Sons dulcitone and a Robert Wernham Albion tablet piano. Harold Rhodes would turn to the identical concept of the dulcitone with his pre-piano in 1946, and Fender Rhodes' electric piano in 1965, replacing the soundboard and resonant cavity with magnetic pickups and electronic amplifier. Robert Warnham was a restless inventor, applying himself to every style of piano in vogue in early 19th century England, as well as harp guitars and other musical instruments. This example of the Albion tablet square piano is the only example known to exist. Another notable instrument from Robert Warnham on display is the Apollo lyre guitar, made around 1810. Lyre guitars were most popular in the first few decades of the 19th century. In the form of the lyre, these guitars reflect the neoclassical trends of that era, partaking in the widespread use of ornament that celebrated the perceived aesthetics of ancient Greece and Rome. These instruments were so trendy that even Beethoven was depicted holding one in an early portrait. The production of fad instruments, such as the lyre guitar, helped makers increase profits, stay on trend, and cater to a wider audience. With six strings, 
The instrument is tuned and played like a normal classical guitar, so consumers could purchase this as a fashionable addition to their collection without learning a new instrument. Other exhibit highlights include three French hurdy-gurdies made between the late 18th and early 19th centuries, Tibetan Buddhist ritual instruments made from human remains, and various side-blown trumpets from Africa and Oceania. Worlds Apart, Musical Instruments from Secular to Sacred, aims to increase public access to historical instruments from around the world and improve visitors' understanding of musical traditions at the global level. Expanding beyond the typical parameters of the Western musical canon, Worlds Apart brings together musical narratives from seemingly disparate parts of the globe. On display through the summer of 2024, this exhibition is sponsored by the Jolly Foundation. Sigal Music Museum also thanks South Carolina Humanities for sponsoring our distinguished lecture series for the duration of this exhibition. Mm -hmm.